Manchester United are a mess right now. Between dramas off the field involving some of their star players and a terrible start to the season on it, this makes Manchester United the perfect candidate for our first EAFC 24 rebuild. Let's restore the Red Devils as one of world football's best clubs again. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our first rebuild of EAFC 24. I am so excited for the year ahead. We're going to be starting the year off with Manchester United. Here is the default starting 11 that EAFC 24 has given the Red Devils. There is definitely some world-class talent in this squad, but there are some key areas that need massive improvements if we're going to make them European champions. But of course, there are a few new things this year, including the coach management, the tactical vision. I've started off with a standard tactical vision, but we will adapt as the rebuild goes on and we start to learn our team a bit better. We've also got the training plans where I've got everybody on balance right now, but again, I can touch that up as we get into bigger games with more fixture congestion, but I am so excited for the year ahead. And of course, you guys know we had to bring Mr. Rebuild back for another year. Dude's looking a little buff, been, been hitting his traps in the off season. For me, the big area that needs improvement is the striker role. Of course, Manchester United signed Rasmus Hoyland in the preseason. And I genuinely think this kid could be a superstar. I'm hoping he becomes Manchester United's next big superstar. But in terms of this rebuild, I don't intend on him being our starting striker. We just don't have the time to, I think we can get this team a Champions League title quicker than it would take for Rasmus Hoyland to become world-class in FIFA terms. Which is why I want us to go in for Oshiman. I mean, look at the Batman goggles. As soon as I saw those Batman face mask goggles, I knew he was the striker for us. So we're going to approach Napoli here and see if we can bring him to Old Trafford to make him the one of the world's best strikers. We're going to come out of the gates flying, offering 124 million pounds, which Napoli are going to accept. You'll love to see it. I'm not messing around, lads. I don't I don't know if they've redone the transfer negotiation system in FIFA to EAFC 24. God, it's going to take me a minute to start calling it EAFC 24 and not FIFA 24. But I want to make sure we can get this done and not deal with any new game mechanics. So no release clause, none of that. It's all looking pretty straightforward at the moment. Going to offer him a nice little pay increase here. He is coming to one of the world's most expensive and rich clubs. £170,000 a week, which is going to be accepted by Elshaman. But our first signing in EAFC 24 is for the Nigerian nightmare, Victor Oshaman. What a signing. Not a bad first signing in the Mr. Rebuild era at all. Trafford. But lads, if you are excited for EAFC 24 and the year ahead, and you aren't already subscribed to the Jared HD channel, what are you doing? We're going to be pumping out the quality content this year, so make sure you scorpion kick that subscribe button down below and help us on our push towards 500,000 subscribers. I'm open to selling some players, but there is not a chance in the world that I am sending Christian Eriksen to Manchester City. That is, that is insulting. In fact, I'm blocking offers for Eriksen. But we have got our first player departure here. We've let him go free. It is Donny van der Beek finally escaped the clutches of Manchester United. He's probably going to go and flourish now at Brighton because everybody that goes to Brighton flourishes. But we get 13.9 million pounds for the Dutchman's signature. This might ruffle a few feathers, but we've sold Jadon Sancho and we've sold him to Arsenal. He's a player that has been rumoured with a move away from Old Trafford. He just hasn't flourished since he's made his move from Borussia Dortmund. Speaking of Dortmund, we actually accepted an offer from them before he went to Arsenal. But he's not happy at Manchester United. He has publicly stated he wants out of the club, so I felt it was right for us to sell him in this rebuild. It's not ideal that we sold him to Arsenal, but they were willing to pay the big bucks. We've also had another big name player to part of the club, former club captain Harry Maguire, heading up north to Newcastle United. Ha! <laughs> I, I should just accept this. I mean, I would be stoked if Fulham had the this type of mentality. My favorite club, Fulham. Trying to go in for Garnacho, but yeah, I, I, this kid's a wonder kid. One of my favorite young prospects, rejected. Another player that has been in a bit controversy at Manchester United is Anthony. I was debating this transfer offer a little bit here, but I want to keep the faith, obviously pending any charges that might happen in real life after this video is published. Right now, based off what we know, I'm going to keep the faith with Anthony and reject this offer from Newcastle United. What is that image? That might be one of the most unflattering 
flattering hunchback press conference photos I have ever seen there from Breuer. And it is officially time for us to say goodbye to Anthony Martial, the Frenchman returning to his homeland as he's signing with Marseille. Can Manchester City just piss off and stop coming in for our top players? They've tried to offer us 30 million pounds in Johns and John Stones. I mean, that might not be the worst offer in the world, but I don't want to sell anybody to you. But we have made another massive signing here at the club. We are investing in our future whilst also being competitive now. Chuamini, he's got the hunchback animation, but Chuamini is going to join us here from Real Madrid. We have had to pay well over his market value, but in my opinion, that is money well spent. 70 million pounds to bring one of the best defensive midfield prospects in world football to Old Trafford. That is... That is a no-brainer. So here is our starting 11 after our opening transfer window at Old Trafford. We've made some necessary changes, but mostly it's been about clearing out the deadwood of the squad and saving some money for the future. We're going to see how this first season plays out. We've got a lot of depth, a lot of bench options, but we'll see how this first season plays out and adjust accordingly. For me, the goal this year is Champions League qualification. I would love if we could push for a Premier League title. I would love if we could push for a Champions League title, but I honestly don't think either of those things are gonna happen. So we'll see how we go. But speaking of the Champions League, as we all know, we are in Group A this season. We've got Bayern Munich, Copenhagen, and Galatasaray. This could turn out anyway. We're just gonna get out of this group. I don't know if we have the quality to beat Bayern Munich, but I'd certainly be happy if we could. Also, the benefit of being at a big club like Manchester United and having a lot of money is we can go out there and get some of the best coach managers on the market. Now, these are some of the best we could find. I want to keep building them up over the season and have it so that we've got five stars in air, all three categories and have just an insane team. Have us working and living up to our full ability. Okay, I can get around that. We have topped our Champions League group. And the funny thing is, Bayern Munich didn't even make it out of it. Aus and Copenhagen are heading to the Champions League knockout rounds. We're one rebuild into FIFA EAFC 24 and we've already had a massive upset. All right, here we go in the round of 16. We have got Sevilla. We've got Sevilla in the round of 16. Isn't that ironic? Doesn't that feel like deja vu? Things are going splendidly in the Premier League as well. He currently sitting third on the 1st of January on 44 points. Although there is a lot of talent breathing down our necks. But I mean, we've got talent breathing down our necks. But we're also breathing down the neck of first place Liverpool. We did have Sergio Rajulon get recalled by Spurs here on the 1st of January. But it's fine. We weren't playing him anyway. So goodbye, Sergio. Going to make a push here though to sign Oshiman's former Napoli teammate here, Giovanni Di Lorenzo had a great campaign for Napoli last year in their title winning season. Let's see if we can bring him across here for the Champions League run in the second half of the season. I don't want to get rid of, rid of Mason Greenwood. We'll bump up the transfer fee a little bit here to 45-2. They say 51-5. And you know what? I'm going to accept that one. No point being a stinge. We're going to accept it. A massive move here in the January transfer window. It is Giovanni Di Lorenzo joining us here from Napoli for 51 and a half minutes million pounds. Our first loan move of the Manchester United rebuild as well. Hannibal Mabry, he's been getting some game time for the Red Devils in real life, but we're going to send him on a six-month loan move to Toulou in the French League. And we've signed enough players from Napoli. It's only fair for us to send one back there. Victor Lindelof, unfortunately, leaving us on a free transfer to Napoli next season. I tried to re-sign him, but he didn't want to re-sign for another year. So thank you and goodbye to Victor. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our first First knockout round game of EAFC 24. I definitely want to do the tactical view at some point this year. But for now, we're going to have the quick sim here. The first leg away in Spain. Taking on Sevilla. Full strength. Starting 11 out on the park. And we come away with an emphatic 3-1 win. The former Man United player Adnan Yanazai getting a consolation goal there. I'm hoping it's a consolation goal in the 86th minute. But it's going to be Anthony with a brace and Oshman with the third goal. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. 3-1 up at Old Trafford. I definitely need to learn the art this year of managing the squad.
squad because as you can see a few of our players aren't fully fit for this one but we've got the sharpness and the morale boasted for it boosted for it here we go for a spot in the champions league quarterfinals we do it with ease bruno makes it 4-1 on aggregate yellow cards for rashford and luke shaw hopefully they don't mean they're scratched out of the first leg in the quarters but we've made it through nonetheless unfortunately our friends copenhagen did not they got thumped by man city oh god lads here we go it's our first massive test of the year it is barcelona in the champions league quarterfinals this is gonna be this is gonna be a good test all right lads let's see what we're made of we're taking on barcelona and we're at home here at old trafford quick simon the first leg and we come away with a 2-1 win Di lorenzo though injured and off immediately for juan basaka that's gonna be a huge blow if he's out for an extended period of time we're two one up rashford and anthony with the goals but i'm nervous about Di lorenzo okay it's not great but it's not the end of the world either Di lorenzo pulled hip flexor four weeks on the sidelines he's gonna miss the second leg against barcelona i'm confident about that but if we go further i'm hoping he'll be back for that gotta actually get further though for that to actually matter no Di lorenzo here for the second leg we got one basaka in this is for a spot in a champions league semi-final here in season number one with manchester united oh my god no Di lorenzo means no manchester united rafinha and Lewandowski putting us to the sword and we've blown a 2-1 lead to lose 3-0 in the second leg and 4-2 on aggregate we are out in embarrassing fashion in season one. Oh, that is a massive relief lads we have held on to a champions league spot by one point we finished third in the premier league man city in fourth aston villa in fifth but we're playing champions league footy again next season fair play to liverpool i know that's not the popular thing to say when you're in charge of man united but they have lost just one game all year and got themselves 93 points yeah hate to see it and in the relegation zone did luton survive luton did survive it is brentford bournemouth and sheffield united all going down we lose the fa cup final here in season one in a manchester derby that one hurts man city do a domestic double as they win the carabao cup manchester city end up doing the treble as they go back to back as champions league winners bayern munich win the europa league and the season one conference league winner is fenerbahce what a first season by bruno fernandez i am very happy i didn't sell him to manchester city for john stones because he's bagged himself 25 goals and 13 assists 38 total goal contributions a great first season as well by Oshman gets himself up to 90 overall 24 goals Rashford Anthony the lads are absolutely killing it we are going to be saying goodbye to a whole heap of players though Johnny Evans and Tom Heaton are retiring Victor Lindelof is heading to Napoli and Sofian Amrabat is heading back to Fiorentina after his loan. But there it is, lads. Our first season in charge of Manchester United. Our first season of a rebuild in EAFC 24. Let's crack on though and go better in every competition in season number two. Season two is gonna begin with a massive player departure here. He's out the third string right back in the squad. He wanted out, which I can sympathize with. So it's going to be Diogo Dalot heading off to Aston Villa for 31 million pounds. We're also going to be saying goodbye to Hannibal Mabry. He's off on a full year loan this year to West Ham United. But we finally get our first addition to the squad here in season number two. It is a monster upgrade at the left back position. It is Theo Hernandez. He's got the wrong jersey on, but I can assure you the jersey he will be wearing will be a man united jersey we did sign him from ac milan for 90 million pounds a lot of money i know but i think he's worth it there you go lads there's there's actual proof that he'll be wearing a manchester united jersey don't you just love the opening few days of the game where it's still a little buggy and getting fixed up another player that we are selling on a permanent transfer heading for greener pastures is brandon williams heading down south to bournemouth we are not stuffing about this year lads we are going as deep as we can possibly go spending a boatload of money in the process as we bring across the Uruguayan center half Ronald Araujo from Barcelona again a lot of players loving these hunchback sort of slump shoulders poses but I don't care as long as they get the job done on the field very excited about the future of this guy but Kobe Mino is off on loan for the year to Pisa 
So I'm actually going to convert Luke Shaw into a center back here. We've got depth. We've got Malassia who can play left back. Juan Bissar. We've got all these players that can go to the left back. So I've decided, why don't we make Luke Shaw a center back, which we do, and then he can be a great backup option for us at both center back and left back. Another player out on a permanent though, as Mason Greenwood is off to Real Betis. And we're going to sign Leon Goretzky here as a backup defensive midfield slash midfield option. We signed him from Bayern Munich for 45 million pounds and just looking at him you can tell that he's stoked to be here we are putting together an unbelievable team here at old trafford we made it to the quarterfinals of the champions league last year there is no reason why we can't go even deeper and even mount ourselves a premier league title run we need to consider those non-negotiables this year to be totally honest we have got an incredibly difficult Champions League group though. Juventus, AS Monaco, and RB Salzburg. That is quality all over the park, which is upsetting. If we can get out of this one, I'll be feeling really good. Perfect, that is fine. You know what, we didn't need to top this group. It might make our run home a little more difficult, but at least we've comfortably made it out of Group A alongside Juventus. Just one draw stopping us from topping the group. In the round of 16, we are versing Inter Milan, damn. You may get Victoria Plizen. We get into Milan. That's upsetting, but I guess we should expect it finishing second. How are we going in the Premier League? We are currently top of the league here on January 1st. One point ahead of both Arsenal and Newcastle United. So not front runners by a comfortable margin, but that's a very good start. Nottingham Forest up in sixth. Fair play to them. Now, as we all witnessed firsthand last year, Rafinha absolutely cooked us in the Champions League round. 16 and there's no way i'm letting that happen again this year so we're gonna go out here and recruit rafinha to play for us rafinha now a backup right wing option here for anthony we got one flary brazilian right winger and we've got a backup flary brazilian right winger as well in rafinha who we signed from barcelona here we go ladies and gentlemen it is time champions league knockout round time we've got inter milan at home here for the first leg they are always good in career mode let's see if we we can get it done in the first leg, which we do. We take them down 1-0. Oshaman giving us the lead. Hopefully, they've got some suspensions in there. But this leg is still not close from being dead. Come on, lads. Second leg. We've got a one-goal advantage as we head to the San Siro here. Let's hang on to it. A draw or a win gets us back to the quarterfinals. And that is exactly what we do. But Rashford, the man that scores us the goal in the first minute, gets himself sent off and we're gonna have to do without our star winger for the first leg in the quarterfinals please get drawn against victoria plison please get drawn against victoria plison oh my god that's actually a shout victoria plison beat juventus on penalties i was doing that ironically i was doing that as a joke victoria plison have beaten Juve on pens. We didn't get Victoria Plizen. We've got the old enemy, Liverpool, in the Champions League quarterfinals. And I'm feeling very happy that we signed Rafinha in the January transfer window because he's going to come in here to replace the suspended Marcus Rashford for this first leg at Old Trafford. Massive game here against Liverpool, which we win 3-2. Bruno Fernandes and Rafinha. It's a brace for Bruno and a goal for Rafinha. Gakpo injured, and we have a narrow road lead as we head to Anfield. And this headline says Gakpo's out for six weeks, which is great. He's going to be out for the second leg for sure. I mean, I'll never prey on a man's downfall, but in terms of FIFA, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with preying on his downfall. Rashford back in. We've got the lead. Gakpo's out, but we cannot afford to get cocky. We were ahead heading into the second leg against Barcelona in the quarters last year, and we know what happened there. Second leg against Liverpool here, and it is a draw that is fine by me. Bruno in the 81st minute sends us to a Champions League semi-final. Come on. Damn it, Victoria Plisson's run is over. Man City beat them 5-1 on aggregate. Why do you have to always ruin the fun, City? A huge semi-final clash, though. RB Leipzig. This is going to be really interesting. They've got a great team in terms of career mode. Can we get past them and into our first 
Champions League final of EAFC. I was really nervous Casemiro might be suspended for the first leg here after his yellow card against Liverpool, but he's in the starting 11. We have a full strength starting 11 as we head to Eastern Germany here, taking on Leipzig. And it is a 2-1 win. I got nervous there when I saw Timo Werner at the top, but Anthony and Oshiman give us the lead. Still again though, we cannot get complacent in anybody's game as we head back to Old Trafford. No, you're taking the piss. Anthony and Di Lorenzo both got a yellow card in that last game and that sees them out for the second leg of the semi-final. That is a massive blow, our right-hand side weakened now just get us a draw or a win and we're into a champions league final we're here at the theater of dream rafinha and one basaka into the starting 11 come on man united hold on don't bottle it lads we don't bottle it we get an early goal there with oshaman to steady the ship i'm right ah, i think that's casemiro suspended isn't it raho and casemiro get yellow cards i'm worried about their eligibility for a champions league final but we're headed there nonetheless as we take down leipzig 3-1 Okay, I don't know if this is better or worse, but Araujo is the only one suspended. Casemiro is sweet for the final. Araujo is out. This is about as big as it gets. Two of the biggest clubs, not just in world football, but sports. Manchester United versus Real Madrid for our first Champions League final in EAFC. This here might be the first Champions League final uploaded in EAFC history to YouTube. Taking a look around the grounds though, Atletico Madrid carrying the Madrid torch well as they win the Europa League. Lazio win a penalty shootout here in the Conference League final. We have had an almighty fall from grace in the second half of the season and end up scraping into a Champions League spot again next season as we finish four. Arsenal win the league and the relegated sides are going to be Burnley, West. West Brom and Luton. Man City win another FA Cup and the Carabao Cup goes to Newcastle. Oshaman is an absolute stud. I can't wait to use our front three in game. Oshaman, Rashford and Anthony. These three are going to be something else, man. This is going to be incredible. Let's get into it. Our first Champions League final in EAFC rebuild history. Let's see how we find the new game. Here we go, lads. Lukaku up top against his former side. Real Madrid versus Manchester United. Let's get into it here in Germany. Bruno going through here to Rashford. Not sure what that thing was above his head, but we're going to focus. Oh my God. Is that going to go down as an own goal? I think that's going to go down as an own goal there against Thibaut Courtois. We got extremely fortunate there. I was more worried about the palm up above Bruno's head rather than the goal. We've skinned Rudiger for pace. It's come off us about three times. Marcus Rashford finds the back of the net. And we have got the lead here in the Champions League final. Kaku, don't let him drag it back. We're just jockeying here nicely. He gets the shot off, but it's palmed away from Onana. Come on, that's counter-attack. This is where I thrive. Rashford, we've had them make themselves make two different thought processes. Oh, what a terrible finish, Jared. I was too busy talking about the words I was trying to say rather than the finish. Casemiro going to Anthony. Anthony, he's going to green beam, and I should have just held on to it because now I've given an opportunity for Real Madrid on the counter-attack, but they've just run out of time, and we have done it, lads. It was a grind of a game. But we have completed our first rebuild in EAFC 24. Now, I want to see if there are new celebrations for winning a Champions League. I've heard about the bus. I want to see it in action. It's going to be the captain, Bruno Fernandes, to lift the Champions League title for the first time in EAFC. You love to see it, lads. Manchester United European champions. How good is that, lads? We can now see us celebrating in the change rooms, but no open top parade. I thought that was meant to be a new addition this year. There it is, lads. The new parade cutscene. Oh, this is beautiful to see. It happens one day after you win a Champions League, which I mean, that probably makes sense, but we're rolling through the streets of Manchester. Bruno, Mr. Rebuild at the front. I want to watch this the whole way through because it's my first time watching it. Let's see how long it lasts for, but this is beautiful to see. I love these little cutscenes. We've even got a DJ on the bus. And there it is, lads, the Manchester United Rebuild. If you enjoyed it, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.